welcome back to my channel i'm susie and i've been reading today i am finally bringing you that list of 21 books that i want to read in 2021 that i have been banging on about in every other video lately so way back in december i made some bookish resolutions as us bookish folk are want to do and one of those included reading more better books it's deceptively simple to that end i went through my extensive want to read shelf on goodreads and picked out 21 books that i really really wanted to read in this the 21st year of the 21st century because symmetry apparently is everything. I tried to focus in on books that I thought I was going to love to try and make 2021 a slightly better year than 2020 and in order to appease future suits. So here they are at last in all their glory. And let's kick it off with The King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. So this series is really popular and everybody seems pissed off at Rothfuss for not having finished it yet, um, which just tells me that they really love it. This is a bit cumbersome. I'm just going to, I'm just going to stick with one. <laughs> It tells the story of Kvothe, and I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Fantasy names, am I right? Now, I know nothing more than that going in. Um, I haven't actively tried to avoid spoilers for this, but it does seem like it might be quite a good thing to go in knowing very little. Um, especially because it's such a popular book, that means that I just get to experience it for the very first time as I'm reading it, and not through the lens of somebody else's POV, either through a review or something like that. So I'm quite excited to go in with fresh eyes on this. Now this apparently willful ignorance might just come and bite me in the arse though because um, I, uh, I might have described this as a fantasy version of an interview with Vampire and the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, look I might be way off base and I think I knew the moment I said that <laughs> I was probably going to sound really stupid for that remark but well, here we are. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this one. I have been desperate to pick this one up for months. It just hasn't worked out in terms of my reading so far this year, but I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna do it by the end of this year. Next up, I've got the Farsi trilogy by Robin Hobb. This one's easy. I have got this massive collection of Robin Hobb books and I have never read a single one. I've got to start somewhere, so I figured it might as well be right at the very beginning of the Realm of the Elderling series with this, the first trilogy. This is high fantasy and apparently it features some of my very favourite tropes. Um, and the general consensus from all that I have seen is that the characters and world building in this are so good that they stay with you forever. Coming in hot with the Raven's Shadow trilogy by Anthony Ryan. Andy will not stop bugging me about this book and honestly I'm getting tired of getting nagged so that's why this one's on the list. Nah, not really. Well, yeah, a bit, but <laughs> it's also true that this has been on my TBR for a really long time and I've heard from people who aren't just Andy, by the way, <laughs> that it is incredible. This is a grim dark fantasy that follows Valen, who trains to become an elite warrior for the secretive Sixth Order. Andy emphatically tells me that this is the best series he has ever read. And trust me when I say he's read some good ones. Um, but he reckons that the storytelling in this is top notch and it totally sucked him in. Plus Andy doesn't recommend books very often. So I really want to take him up on it. And um, I want to be able to have like little conversations with him about it. And for him to see my reaction as I'm reading it. Because he tells me that I'm, I'm probably going to do what we call the Susie gasp. Which is like a... <gasps> when you're watching something on telly and like something really shocking happens oh my god <laughs> like, that i think he's expecting me to do that at some point <laughs> Next up is the Devabad trilogy by S.A. Chakravorty. The Devabad trilogy follows Nari as she goes from hustling on the back streets of 18th century Cairo to discovering a world of magic and an ancient legacy that she had no idea existed. I read this trilogy over the course of a week back in May and when I say read, what I mean is outright binged it. I barely came up for air. This story is so unbelievably magical and I was just, I was entirely immersed in the world the entire time that I spent with these books. It is a firm favourite of mine and proof that I sometimes know what I'm doing when I'm picking a list of what is essentially just five star predictions for myself. So you know when you're at a social gathering, I mean obviously less so recently but bear with me, and the conversation might turn to books and you, an avid reader, are so excited to get involved only for the conversation to turn towards classic books that you've never read, only pretended that you have because you know that it is incredibly shameful that you still haven't picked them up. 
Yeah, well that's what got me set on reading 12 classics in 12 months. Now the classics have never really appealed to me, not on a personal level. I read for escapism, I don't want it to be hard work, and honestly they all just seem like they'd be a bit too highbrow for me. So when I was building that list of 12 classics that I plan to read this year, I went for ones that I thought would be worth all of that time and effort. I either went for ones that are incredibly well known and that everybody seems to talk about, or ones that I thought I would love. And Jane Eyre featured high on that list. So I read this back in June and I was wholeheartedly swept away by it. I give it five stars. It is my favourite classic of all time and it features one of my favourite characters of all time. If you haven't yet, please, please go and pick it up. Um, the, it is super accessible as classics go and the writing is just unforgettable. I loved it and I just want everybody else to read and love it too. Another book that crosses over from my 12 in 12 list to this one as well is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And the reason this one's here is because everybody, everybody has read this but me. Going into Pride and Prejudice, I have no idea what to expect. I literally, I ain't got the foggiest. Like, <laughs> nobody seems to talk about the plot of this one. <laughs> and somehow I've managed to dodge the movie my entire life too, so I am literally clueless. But if we were to play a word association game and you were to give me the prompt classic books, this hands down is the first one I think of. Also, there is no denying Austin's stay in power and I'm just, I'm keen to try and understand why that is by reading what is arguably her most famous work. Moving it along now to the Poppy War Trilogy by R.F. Quang. This series is Chinese military history inspired fantasy and it is epic. I give all three books four stars and as series go this is up there. I mean it particularly in terms of the plot and the themes that it explores. Plus the political intrigue is wonderfully twisty, the world building was solid, the characters were well written, the fight scenes were fast moving and the storytelling was top notch. I mean it was bloody brilliant. Also, Quang wrote this series while studying for her multiple degrees, including two masters from Cambridge and Oxford. Uh, <laughs> and she's been busy whipping up a brand new novel, which by the way, has been pegged as dark academia, while she's been doing her PhD programme. I mean, if her capacity to just get shit done is not goals, I, I don't know what is. Next is Gemina and Obsidio by Jay Christoph and Amy Kaufman. These are books two and three in the Illuminae files. I read and loved the first book in the series last year, Illuminae, so I immediately put the next two books on my TBR. And then I bought them. And then I put them on my shelves. To die, apparently. I have been meaning to pick them up for ages. I'm sure you know all about them as they're such a popular series on booktube, um, but it's YA sci-fi in a mixed media format and I just loved how fast paced the first book was. I enjoyed the storyline and it had AI in it which didn't hurt but mostly I just nerded out over all the design details. I'm interested to see where the story went after book one because from what I understand book two follows an entirely different set of characters and then they all come together again in book three. Next is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. It's Hendrix, it's a done deal for me. Also, I could be wrong, but it sounds pretty self-explanatory. Um, I mean, it's, it's a horror novel set in the 80s, and I'm presuming that the main character's best mate needs an exorcism. All I know is it's Hendrix, and he is my king of horror, so I'm on board. Then I picked The Project by Courtney Summers. Now, I picked this because, like a lot of you, I loved Sadie, and um, this is Summers' 2021 release. I've already read this one and you will undoubtedly be seeing it again in my most disappointing reads of 2021. I give it 2.5 stars. This just felt really rushed and overdone at points for me. It follows Lo as she tries to re-establish contact with her big sister B, who has been lost to her for several years ever since she joined an organisation called The Unity Project, which is widely suspected of being a cult. The story had a decent amount of twists and turns and um, primarily centred around this is he isn't he narrative relating to Lev who is the leader of the Unity Project um, and you're trying to figure out whether or not he is the good guy he says he is or if he is truly this master manipulator who is just destroying people's lives. Also where is B and what has really been happening to her in the years since she's been gone? Why can't Lo see or contact her? There's a lot of potential, but it didn't work for me, and I'll, I'll tell you more about it in my end of year series. And finally, I have got The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Sapphic, dragons, political intrigue, I'm sold, I'm, I'm sold. I think I've only been putting this one off because it is an absolute monster. I mean, just, <laughs> just look at it. 
It is 805 pages long, but it is a standalone fantasy and props to Shannon for giving it the space it needed rather than trying to cut it down to a more commercial size. So if my maths is right, that is 21 books. Hooray! <laughs> Now, if you've been paying close attention, you will probably realise that I am not even halfway through this list yet, despite the fact that we are now much more than halfway through the year. So um, I've got some work to do, but it's no chore. This list has featured some phenomenal books already, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to love a lot more of them too. Let me know what you thought of these books, if any of them are on your radar, if you think I've got any duds in there, if you're convinced I've got another five star read, I would love to hear. Also, how embarrassed should I be about that King Killer Chronicles comment? Like, Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss a thing and I will see you in another one soon. Thank you as ever for watching. Bye! This definitely feels more wonky today. That I have been banging out in the past, uh, banging out? <laughs> All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Why is this series so hard to hold? <laughs> Have I just been covering my face with the shadow that- Oh, that's so annoying. That didn't really work, did it? <laughs> it is- Oh my god, I'm not even sure I can- <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting very far forward, like, sit back. Where am I going to put all these? <laughs> when I finished talking about them. Mm. Oh my god, there's a glossary and everything. Oh my god, right, okay, here we go. Ugh. How long does this go on for then? Oh my god, I should have done this in prep, shouldn't I? Ah, here we go. A bit jazzy, wasn't it? <laughs>